Oh, I love these cliffs. They're in an absolutely perfect spot. The view from the top is amazing. Can you imagine having your base right here? But I want to build a house and cliffs don't do houses, but they do now. I'm going to make you this cliffside house that's also a base with a world download for Bedrock and Java. And this seed is really awesome. I'll put the seed number in the description for you. That's enough jibber jabber, let's get on with it. Now, ordinarily when you do a build, you need to do quite a lot of terraforming. For this, I've got to do very little to be honest. I'm just gonna slap a little bit of dirt and smooth up this side of the face, I think, and make it just a little bit flatter. But other than that, I think we're good to go. I think that will do, although we may play with it a little bit more as we go. I don't know exactly what blocks I'm gonna to use to build this yet because I'm gonna make it up as I go along, which is standard. But the rough palette I'm gonna use is inside this chest. Stone, wood, decoration blocks. Plus we're also gonna add things like workstations. Take a screenshot, pause the video, let's crack on with it. I've placed two cobblestone blocks on the same Y level, 19 blocks apart in that cliff face. And I'm gonna use them as the starting point to build two sectors of a 17 block wide circle. Because 17 block wide circles are brilliant because they're big enough to do something worthwhile with and they're really easy, including that block. It's one, two, three, come in, one, two, three, come in, one, two, three, and then including that block, it's one, two, three, out, one, two, three, out, one, two, and that is the center. Do it again on the other side. But I made the two starting points 19 blocks apart, which means I've got a semicircle that's actually a semi-oval, which is exactly what I want, and I'm gonna fill it in. That is 122 spruce planks. And I'm gonna create an upside down stair trim out of andesite stairs. I know that's quite a contrast, but don't worry, we're gonna make it good. And I've built the six pillars at the back up six high, and the two pillars at the very front are four high. And I'm gonna fill in the wall Walls with some stripped oak wood. Now, I appreciate that this is very flat. There's no depth at all to this wall, but we'll be sorting that out later. So it's gonna look like that, but we're about to reclaim some of that stripped oak. So our frame looks like that. It looks really ugly at the moment, but it will look better, I promise. I'm then gonna grab more of this stripped here, and I'm gonna place it in this gap, because, well, I've got a gap there on my cliff. You may not, in which case, you don't need to do that. It's entirely what your setting gives you. And I'm gonna place glass in all of these gaps, which is gonna bring in a lot of light and a lot more depth into the entirety of the build along there in these three spots and in these six as well. And I've also put glass panes on the sides here so you've got a completely open view. Not sure about that yet, but I guess we'll see by the end. And we're gonna create a flat gradient roof on this front part using cobbled deep slate. I'm gonna to have to just come in there, get rid of that, and then pop that there. That's gonna come along right like that, and then I can come into the middle, and then that should just hit the top of our block. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side as well. That's nice and shallow, so it won't get in the way of the rest of the build. I'm just gonna pop a slab there, a slab there and also a slab in there because they won't let me put any other different bits in. I'm gonna get more of our stripped oak and place it in like that. I know friends, it looks ugly, but trust the process. We're also gonna put a sideways sloped roof on this larger part. So I've gotta come up and pop that there. That's then gonna come up and just make a zigzag pattern until we actually reach the cliff face. I like the effect that gives. It's like a full block that's offset by just half a block. So both sides look like that. And then we're gonna use spruce slabs to create the roof. We are gonna to have to jump over this section bit here because, well, it's not gonna let us put anything on it. We will need to place that there and that there just to fill it in. And then we're gonna follow on with the rest of this, but I'm gonna be indented by one. You can see I've got a single raised part on each of these offset blocks. So that's the bottom half of that. This is the bottom half of that and so on. On the fourth block up, I'm gonna come in one, two, and three. And on the other side, I'm gonna do the same, one, two, and three. I'm then gonna get myself some deep slate stairs and I'm gonna place a deep slate stair there and a deep slate stair there. I'm gonna place an upside down one right there and then I'm gonna remove the first one and place it backwards so as it's on top of something there and place it backwards so it is there. And then I'm just gonna build a standard gable end here just like that. I'm then gonna place spruce steps all the way up the gable on the inside, and then I'm gonna put spruce planks all the way to the cliff face. And then I'm gonna carry on with the roof, making sure that I meet exactly the right point. So here, we've got a step problem. So that step 
needs to come out and place a slab like that on this side that needs to come out and place a slab like that and then I'm going to carry on until I've got a completed roof and it should end up looking a little bit like that and I'm going to place two spruce slabs there just to give that a little bit of extra shape obviously if you're doing it on a different cliff face you're going to get a slightly different shaped roof I'm just going to bring in some spruce fence and I'm going to follow the curve of that circle all the way to the edge of that wall and I'm going to come the other side and I'm going to do the same right here and I'm also going to do it at the front you're going to one two three four and five just like that on both sides we're going to come inside the house and where we can we are going to place a solid oak wood right here so we can do two there we can do two there so we've got a little bit of a gap there I'm going to fill that up with some spruce plank like that and we're going to come and do the other side I'm also going to do the front so I'm going to place one there one there and one there I'm going to come across like that across like that and across like that so that's three deep one there one there and one there we're obviously going to do something with that just dangling and then i'm going to do this end as well so our house is now fully enclosed i've placed some light inside so we don't have anything to surprise us when we go in because we need to decorate the outside up just a little bit i can't stand it anymore so underneath these windows i'm placing some windowsills like that some ledges all the way along i'm then also going to get myself some of these oak trap doors and also some spruce trap doors because we're going to be using both. The spruce trap doors are going to come to the side of these big windows on both sides like this, two and three. And then similarly on the side here, we're going to have one and two, one and two. We can't put one there because that's in the way. On this side, we're going to have one and two and we're going to repeat that all the way around. I'm then going to pop out on these edges. So they're going to go forwards. I've not got a pop out here. So I'm going to remove that and pop that in there. I'm going to remove this second one this side and pop that in there as well. We've got the opportunity to pop out right here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put one on that side as well. I'm also going to pop one there because there's a strut meeting another strut. Let's do it on the other side. And on the ends of all of these pop outs, I'm putting an oak trap door and flapping it down. We're also going to create a separation between the top and the bottom. So I'm going to put three bits of step there and then I'm going to place a slab between them so we get that crenellation effect. And on the side here, we're going to do the same. We're going to put a step there. And we're going to put a step there because that's a four gap. We're just going to have two bits of slab there. Then we're going to put that there and two bits of slab like that. I'm just going to remove that because that's in my way. We're going to do that on the other side as well. It's already starting to look a little better, but we've got a way to go yet. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pop out that block and I'm going to fill that up with another window. So let's grab myself some glass, pop some glass right there. I've got this horrible gap here that we're going to do something with in a minute. I'm then going to get a step. And I'm going to go underneath that step and I'm going to place those on either side and on each of these window seals we're going to place a lantern just to give some external light obviously when there's more than one window seal we're not going to place lanterns on all of them and we need to change up these logs this is all very straight at the moment so i'm going to get a composter i'm going to place it at the bottom like that and i'm also going to put a composter and place it at the top like that i'll do that on all these upward struts and then on the center strut i'm going to place a barrel so as it is facing upwards so we get that strip effect on the wood and place that all the way around as well and on these front shorter struts we're going to place a barrel on the middle one again so the orientation shows us that black stripe on the two shorter front struts i'm going to place an upside down step to the front and also to the side and then to the front of the strut at the very bottom i'm going to place another oak trap door like that on these bits here on the longer sides we're going to place a button on each of those and then a button there and there and repeat that on the other side. We're going to need to sort out these front windows because that just looks a little bit weird. I'm going to get rid of that and then place an upside down spruce step on either side and then I'm going to get a slab and place it one level up. That creates for a nice little kind of window shade. Let's do this on the other side there, there and then a slab right there. And that makes me think I need to change these sides up as well. So I'm gonna pop out the top trap door on both of those sides, and I'm gonna bring slabs across the top like that. And they're gonna to come to the other side, I'm gonna repeat it so as we've got an upside down step there, upside down step there, 
and a couple of slabs there. The shape that gives is a bit more attractive. It means that those shutters don't exactly shut the window, but I can't have everything. We're coming underneath now, and the first thing I'm gonna do is place an andesite slab all the way around the outside underneath this spruce plank. I'm gonna fill the rest in with a full andesite block, and that makes for a really nice stepped in effect. But we need to spoil it a little bit because where this back strut comes under, we've got to count in one, two, three, and in this block here, we're gonna knock that out and place a solid piece of wood like that. So that's as if that strut is continuing down. We're gonna do that again on the other side as well. And we need to place some support struts that actually look good. And we're gonna do this by creating a gradual curve. I'm gonna come down one, two, and I'm gonna get a spruce step and I'm gonna place it backwards. I'm gonna get some more oak, I'm gonna come out one, two, and then another two, and then a spruce step underneath, another log at the back, come down one this time, and then another spruce, come down one at the back, one, and then a spruce, come out one at the back, which means we're now touching the wall, which means we start to support the structure already, one there, and then fortunately, just right in front of that grass, we have got one last one. So that's the relative shape that we're gonna have, but it's way too thin. So we need to bring this up with a little bit more stair. I don't like the fact that that's popping out there. So I'm gonna place a step like that. That's the support structure. We'll do that on the other side. However, we are gonna need some more. That isn't gonna be enough on its own. That support has met the cliff a little bit early. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more terraforming because I don't think that looks right when you see it. it's imbalanced and I'm gonna change it. So we're gonna get rid of this all the way along like that. I think that's enough. And then I'm gonna bring out that there that down, that can go there like that, that's much better. And then I can grab my steps, I'm gonna place the steps in exactly the same spot as the other ones. I'm also gonna get some trap doors around these for a little bit of extra texture, but it also makes it look just a little bit wider as well, which I really quite like. So I'm gonna place them on top of the block that is before the step. So you can see we've got the block there before the step there, block there before the step there. That means that we're doing this block here as well. We're gonna come under like that, and this one, and also this one. And I would say if we had that row missing, I would also put one there just to give a little bit of extra support. I think that looks pretty supportive. We've got these two big struts going all the way down the mountainside holding the front of the house up. We've got this main central strut. That looks really strong at supporting the middle. And then we've got the four struts at the back going deep into the mountainside supporting the back of the house. But it all looks very dark underneath here. So on this spot between those two buttons, I'm placing a grindstone. I'm then gonna shift click a chain onto the bottom of it and then under that I'm going to put a lantern that's going to light up that side I'm going to repeat it on this side and then right up against the wall right behind this final strut we're going to place a grindstone there a chain there and a lantern right against the bottom of that chain right there still got a lot more to do under there but I'm going to move on we are inside our base now and we need to make a little bit more room so I'm going to dig this wall out a few blocks and that's created a bit of a mess. Obviously, I've got dirt, I've got stone, I've got all kinds of mess. The roof is a little bit open there, but I've gone in another four. So we've got one, two, three, four there, one, two, three, four there. And I'm gonna replace the floor with some planks, I'm gonna replace the sides with wood, and I'm gonna replace the back with wood as well. And I'm also gonna fix this poor roof and do something about this mess as well. So we've got quite a grand room with two potential levels, and under here, I'm just gonna edge off with a little bit more spruce and that's gonna completely close off the roof for me. And just to hide up these unsightly bits here, I'm gonna place a spruce slab all the way to the top on both ends and that's gonna disguise that beautifully for me. And to get rid of this area here, I'm coming across and then I'm gonna come all the way across underneath this stripped oak too and close that off. And that already looks loads better. And what I'm now gonna do is create an upstairs, but first I just need to block off this underside of this gable. There's not enough room to put anything under there. So we may as well block it off and make it a feature. So if I bring that all the way along like that, I then get myself some spruce stairs 
and trim all the way around against this log. And then I'm gonna come inside that top step area and I'm gonna bring myself some slabs right across. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put the stairs up to the next level yet, so I'll probably close it all off and break an open space when I'm ready. It is actually a pretty decent open area up here. I'm gonna come to this back wall. I'm gonna count in one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna knock out those three and then one, two, three, four, five. And they're gonna make a three by three hole and I'm gonna dig three deep past it. So that's one. Now, because the top of this cliff is so small, we can't step up because we'll end up coming out the other side of the cliff. So I'm gonna go up using some ladders. But before we do that, we're gonna line this up. And of course there's more gravel, let's get rid of that. We're gonna line this all up with some wood. I'm gonna leave that gap like that. I'm gonna get rid of that there. I'm gonna take out those and place some stone to there. I'm gonna leave that like that. And then I'm gonna get more stone here. I'm gonna get more wood. Put the wood in like that. I'm gonna leave that open and dig out a little bit further. Put the wood in there. And then we're gonna do the same with this wall. And we're also gonna extend the floor out as well. And I placed some light in because it was getting really dark. And we're gonna dig up from that point. I'm a little bit worried about gravel falling on my head, but maybe we'll be all right. And let's go all the way to the top. At the top, I've created this little lantern marker and there's a trap door and you can just go straight back down it into your base. You probably guessed, but I am putting some obsidian there, there. I'm also gonna put some there, there, there like that there and there that is going to be our nether portal i'm going to take those blocks out and i'm going to place of course there's more gravel those there like that and block up the back and what that means is i need to get myself some fence gates and place those there there and there which means any piglins that come in are going to wander into your base and now this is where it comes down to you decoration is a very personal thing you can decorate this however you want and i've decided to go for this we've got an enchantment area some storage obviously a grindstone to be able to take enchantments off and a few anvils to be able to add them on we've got another portal which i haven't lit yet because of the noise we've got a workstation area we've got a potion brewing area plenty of storage a little bit of green and a little area here where you can just look out of your window at this gorgeous gorgeous landscape more work area here with a little bit more storage and up the stairs we're covering up some of the wood with some pictures but we've got a bedroom that would make anybody jealous we've got loads of item frames storing all of our tools we've got some armor on armor stands more storage an ender chest a triple bed even more storage and some candles i can't be honest i'm actually quite pleased with the way this interior's gone i'm not normally very good at them this one's all right Let's light up that portal. We can go through to the nether dimension now, although I'm not going to. I've also added a little bit of extra storage opposite our nether portal. So all that leaves us to do is to give the outside a little bit more life and decoration. And I'll be using vines, bushes, lichen, and frankly, anything else I can get my hands on. And this is how it turned out. It looks good close up and it looks really good from a distance as well. And I'm giving this one to you free in Bedrock and Java as a world download. All you need to do is go to avamance.com. That is avamance.com and that will take you to a free downloads page. There'll be a dedicated link for the Java and the Bedrock versions with instructions. And did I mention it's completely free? So let me know what you think. Are you gonna download this and play this amazing seed? Just pop a message in the comments below. Really pleased how this one came out. If there's something you'd like me to try and build, let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a go. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.